Now, we're asking you this morning as our debate, should trans women be allowed to compete in female sports? Feminist groups have expressed shock after it was revealed that a park run women's record is still being held by not only a trans athlete, but somebody who is a convicted criminal, Lauren Jessica. Tried to murder someone, mm. tried to stab someone uh, because they were questioning um, her, his, their records. Um, but should transgender women be excluded because of a physical advantage? Mm. Argument over, really. Or are they being treated unfairly? Former Olympic swimmer Shannon Davis believes the gender category you perform in should be based on the biological reality of your gender. And Rebecca Reid says trans people should be able to compete in non-contact sports. So it's an interesting debate. Sharon, let's start with you. I know you've written a book about this. It's coming out next month, Unfair Play. You feel very strongly that you should be competing in the gender to which you were born. Yeah, good morning to you both. Yeah, the book's about the challenges to women's sports through history. And believe me, there's been challenges nonstop since women wanted to get involved in sport. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm just fighting for the rights of, of biological females to have equal opportunities in sport that biological males get. And we know that males are faster, stronger because of every single record of every single result in the Olympic Games since history began. And, you know, this isn't because they're better. It's because we're built differently. And that's what it's all about. And sport should be absolutely for everybody. I 100 percent agree with Rebecca. You know, that sport has been my life and I wouldn't want anyone to not be involved in sport. However, it must be fair. And it still remains fair for male athletes with the inclusion of, of transgender men, biological females, because it will affect no, their results, not in the slightest. However, by including males into sport that was designed solely to exclude males, you are actually putting women at a disadvantage. And we have WADA, which is the World Anti you know, doping agency, and their whole job is to stop people from cheating, from gaining the tiniest advantage in a race. And I just don't understand the point of even having WADA for women's races if we're going to say to, mm. to trans identifying males, you can go into a women's race with up to a 30% advantage and, and no one's going to have a problem with it whatsoever. Well, let's talk about the problem of Lauren Jessica, uh, Rebecca. Um, even aside from the, the gender situation, I mean, this person is in prison for 18 years, 18 years after repeatedly stabbing UK athletes head of human resources after he said her titles would be null and void. And this was a riot over testosterone levels. You would think on that on that basis alone, um, she should be stripped of a title. Yeah, I mean, I think this, this isn't that that specifically isn't an issue about women in sport. That's an issue about a totally unhinged person doing something inherently evil. Um, but I'm not sure that that is about their transness. I think that's about their unhingedness. Um, but yeah, of course, if somebody has tried to stab somebody, I'd be supportive of taking away their park run title. I'd also be supportive of taking away their liberty. Um, so I think it's a little bit of a conflation of two things. And maybe slightly an indication of how toxic this conversation gets and how we seem to be in this country and in fact in lots of countries unable to have a dispassionate, calm conversation about trans people in sports. But it's not dispassionate. It's not dispassionate, Rebecca. If I place my thighs beside your thighs, uh, mine will be significantly bigger and stronger. And if I identify as a woman, I'll still beat you in a race. Sure. And I think in a situation where my ability to get into university, like in the American system with scholarships, I think that's an issue. In a situation where we're in a, non we're in a contact sport, where we're fighting, that's an issue. In non-contact, non-professional sport like parkrun, I don't understand why that's a problem, because ultimately it's not a career. It's not changing your life. It's an inclusive kind of sport that everybody's supposed to be able to take part in. So yes, when no. we talk about travel women in sports, that is what my line is. I think if it is non Contact no, but, uh, and not no, I still go back to the thigh issue. Let's hear what Sharon has to say on that. Uh, Re Rebecca is saying yeah, it's I mean, non-contact, but I mean, obviously, whether you're um, historically male or female, it's going to affect your power, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And we've got, you know, we've got 17 studies in the world and not a single one of them shows that you can mitigate male puberty advantage. So, you know, it's irrelevant how much we suppress testosterone later in life. It makes practically no difference. However, park run is still competitive to many people. You know, lots of people, that's the reason why we have course records. Otherwise, people wouldn't bother to keep them. And at the moment, there are five course records that are held by trans identifying males. So no one is saying that anyone can't take part. And no one is saying that you can't identify and wear whatever 
whatever you want when you turn up your part run. However, what we're saying is that the records should be held by people that are biologically female or biologically male, depending on the but, category. But so, Char and if they want to introduce a new record, you know, a transgender record, then by all means do that. But it's but not that was, fair on females to and, not be able and to I hold totally their own record. I totally understand that argument. And, you know, I think most people can understand that argument. I think in the case of Lauren Jessica, um, she was particularly exercised because she people in her world, in her family, didn't know she had transgendered. And by making it public in this park run that she was in a, perhaps a different category, neither male nor female, but competing as a transgender, that would have outed her, if you like. And is that a problem? I mean, if we create this special category, then it, it's almost attracting attention to these people who you know, whether you sympathise with it or not, it's a hugely traumatic process, I'm sure, to change gender. But but you're not. That's the thing. You know, you do it online, Isabel. So so ultimately, people just actually tick a box about their right. age and about their gender. OK, so so no one actually is identifying you publicly when you go and race whatsoever. It's just that then your time would be recorded online as the right. course record or as a PB or whatever. So, you know, I think the whole situation with that particular person was very, very different. And in fact, that's not really very true, because at the time they had to reduce their testosterone levels to be able to compete. And the reason why there was this incident was because the person from from British Athletics asked about their testosterone levels. So if the rule is a, B, and C, then you've got to be able to ask, have yeah. you competed A, B, and C? You know, so, yeah, I mean, I think it, we can put that person to one side and just go, yeah. that is a, a terrible incident, and that is not an example of transgender people, all right? You know, I 100% do not say that's what transgender people are. You know, I have great empathy for anyone that has gender dysphoria. But my whole point is that I support female sports athletes. You know, I went through the GDR era where for 20 years, the IOC did absolutely nothing to stop the East Germans from taking testosterone, cheating and dominating women's sports. And I have so many friends that didn't receive their awards because they were cheated out of them. And I just do not want to see another generation of young females have the same thing happen to them. And why don't you think, Rebecca, listening to that argument, that that is a legitimate argument? I think, if again, if it's your career and you've given up your whole life to be the best at ice skating or swimming or long jump, I completely understand it. I think if it's a run in a park on a Sunday morning, I think, for me, the priorities shift. But I also think that we're looking into a different situation now where increasingly people are reaching adulthood who didn't go through male puberty who are trans um, because, sorry, on a very sore throat. Um, I think increasingly we have a situation where people have been taking puberty blockers from much younger. Male puberty hasn't happened in the same way. And those people, we don't have the data, we don't have the research. And so I think we're still catching up with this issue as it develops. OK. Uh, Rebecca, thank you to you and your sore throat. Uh, Sharon Davis, thank you <laughs> very much indeed. You've soldiered through that very, very well. Uh, and so the question is, Lauren Jessica, uh, women's record holder on the Park Run website, should she be there or not? Because uh, she transgendered to a woman and was born a man. But it is an interesting thing between male and female sport. For instance, yeah. in sports where it shouldn't make a difference what sex you are, like darts or snooker. Mm. Maybe, you know, golf, golf is different. Darts and snooker, I would say. Why, why do women not even come close to matching Maybe they men? just don't get access. I mean, I don't think it's a very... There's probably not the opportunities in darts and snooker that there are. Did you never play snooker when you were young? Did you never go to snooker hall? And hang up. We had a snooker table when I was growing up, so I did. Or oh, it was a pool table, but um, I was never very good at it. 